And this episode is called End Time Prophecies and the Power of the Atom. Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical and Biblical Israelites. This video is strictly for educational purposes and commentary. End of Biblical and Secular Historical Literature, so enjoy. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. The Atom The Atomic Age, also known as the Atomic Era, is the period of history following the detonation of the first nuclear weapon, the gadget, at the Trinity Test in New Mexico on the 16th of July, 1945, during World War II. Although nuclear chain reactions had been hypothesized in 1933, in the first artificial self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction, Chicago Power One, had taken place in December 1942, the Trinity test and the ensuring bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki that ended World War II represented the first large-scale use of nuclear technology and ushered in profound changes in socio-political thinking in the course of technological development. In 1901, Frederick Soddy and Ernest Rutherford discovered that radioactivity was part of the process by which atoms change from one kind to another. Involving the release of energy, Soddy wrote in popular magazines that radioactivity was a potentially inexhaustible source of energy and offered a vision of an atomic future where it would be possible to transform a desert continent, thaw the frozen poles, and make the whole earth one smiling garden of Eden. The promise of an atomic age with nuclear energy as the global utopian technology for the satisfaction of human needs has been a reoccurring theme ever since. But Saudi also saw that atomic energy could possibly be used to create terrible new weapons. This narrative is about end time prophecies. An ancient technology used to bring about modern day cataclysms to rebuild society and restart the world over again. And this future history of cataclysm by fire, atomic fire, was predicted by the first man. According to the complete works of Josephus, a first century Israelite priest, Levite, who fought against the Romans in the Roman Jewish wars. Adam's prediction of the world destroyed by force of fire. According to Josephus, the sons or children of Adam were the inventors of ancient technologies. They also were the inventors of that peculiar sort of wisdom, which is concerned with the heavenly bodies and their order, and that their inventions might not be lost before they were sufficiently known. Upon Adam's prediction that the world was to be destroyed at one time by the force of fire, atomic energy, and another time 
by the violence and quantity of water, the past flood. So they made two pillars, the one of brick, the other of stone. They inscribed their discoveries on them both, that in case the pillar or brick should be destroyed by the flood, the pillar of stone might remain and exhibit those discoveries to mankind and also inform them that there was another pillar of brick erected by them. Now this remains in the land of Sirid to this day. So according to Josephus, and we can look at the picture of Noah, Shemham, Japheth, and their wives. Noah predicted two cataclysms. The first, the flood. The second, a fire. And Josephus noted that the ancients believed that certain ancient technologies or wisdom was preserved by the ancients of knowledge or wisdom before the flood. And ever since then, the global elite of all nations have been obsessed with finding out and deciphering this knowledge and this technology. For example, during World War II, the Germans were known for sending out many expeditions to search out temples, ancient temples, and other sites, cities, to look for and uncover ancient hidden knowledge to help them win the war. I don't think it's unfair to assume that the Germans were partly successful in their uncovering of ancient knowledge and technologies because we live in the time of a major cataclysmic event of fire as predicted by Adam in the works of Josephus. So at first we took a look at an ancient historian from 2000 years ago, Josephus, explaining an extinction level event occurring. Now, let's move up to modern day times. By our modern historian of an extinction level event by fire. The secret team, the CIA and its allies in control of the United States and the world. By Fletcher Prouty. In spite of all of this, it was generally accepted that World War III would be a nuclear war, that it would be a brief war during the nuclear exchange period, and that it would be followed by a long, protracted, and very complex post-strike campaign in which the least devastated nation would try to mount forces sufficient to occupy the territory of the most of the damaged nation and to bring about some order in what would most certainly be a totally devastated area. Such plans visualized that there might very well be strong cells of more or less conventional forces and other cells of varying degrees of local political power that would have to be taken over 
and organized in the enemy's homeland. Such plans required that certain areas of any potentially hostile country must be left untouched by atomic warfare in order that radioactivity from direct hits and from the much more unpredictable fallout patterns would not become a retarding factor. Various studies were made of meteorological patterns and other known physical factors in order that war plans could be drawn that would leave certain selected uncontaminated pockets in the target countries. Ultimately, Fletcher Prouty wrote that these plans or visions or ideas of the future were left up to the determination of this group that he names the power elite, an ancient network of anonymous men. This is because as with any highly professional team, it has its managers, its front office, and its owners. The power elite are the owners of global modern society today. These are the power elite to whom it is beholden. They are anonymous and their network is ancient and worldwide. And so according to Josephus, the biblical man predicted the world will be destroyed by a cataclysm or a destruction by force of fire. And the atomic age has made that vision and prediction of Adam possible. And so today we live in the atomic age, an age where Knowledge of the atom can either lead the world into a new garden of Eden, according to some experts, or bring about major destructive weapons. And according to Josephus, the first century historian, the children of Adam were the adventures of wisdom concerning heavenly bodies and this is known and is said to be true of Chaldean priest astronomers from the first civilization after the flood where as astronomers they partook in ideas of the creation which today is called the Big Bang Singularity or the Cosmic Egg. But in the Torah, the scripture is the most honest and truthful account of what actually happened in the beginning stages of the universe in which we live in. But in Mesopotamia, in the beginning stages of civilization, when religion and science was one, mankind was in possession of the most advanced form of knowledge. And so civilization in Mesopotamia started off with sophisticated knowledge, such as the Pythagoras theorem. The tablet is the earliest discovered example of applied Geometry, a 3,700 year old clay tablet has revealed that the ancient Babylonians understood the Pythagorean theorem more than 1,000 years before the birth of the Greek 
philosopher Pythagoras, who is widely associated with the idea. The ancient people of Mesopotamia, of Babylonia, the homeland of Abraham, who was born in the city of Ur of the Chaldees. These ancient men, these ancient Chaldean astronomers possessed knowledge that they later passed to the Greeks. Knowledge such as subatomic particles. But in the time of the Greeks, subatomic particles were not called subatomic particles. They were called forms, as in integrative problem solving. In a time of decadence, this author, as well as many other authors, classify Plato's forms as subatomic particles. It turned out that Plato's pure forms, what Plato calls forms, are known as subatomic particles. It turned out that Plato's pure forms, those unseen things that gave rise to everything else, were made out of sub atomic particles, a surreal collection of electrons, neutrinos, gluons, and quarks of all directions. How did the ancients or people in a classical Greek period, such as Plato, know of such things as subatomic particles? This ancient technology brought us to the age that we live in today, the atomic age. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.